hey, look, if, if the FBI, which you know, I still view as a legitimate institution in this country, it's a very professional law enforcement. They come to us and tell us that we need to be on guard about something that I want to take that seriously. Sorry, um, does that statement not have an odor of coercion? <laughs> If they come to me, if, if the FBI comes to me, I'm going to take that statement seriously. But it's not, it's not a First Amendment issue. These are private actors just acting on their own. There's absolutely no coercive, there's no coercive um, pressure being applied by the government. I think there's an argument to be had there. But setting all of that aside, setting all of that aside, it's a scandal of epic proportions because it was election interference that actually impacted the election and people don't seem to care. And, I, and like, I, ha I get angry every now and again. That's my, it's my pinned tweet now. Do you not understand what happened yet, you morons? And I don't know who the morons are here anymore. It's certainly not everyone watching. Because we, God, I, I've been talking about this article since the first day that I found it. The secret history of the shadow campaign that saved the 2020 election. This is from the article, Time. That's why the participants want the, his, the secret history of the 2020 election told, even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream, a well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies, working together behind the scenes to influence perceptions, change rules and laws, steer media coverage, and control the flow of information. How did they do it? They got law enforcement to meet with big tech monopolies and wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, peanut butter sandwich, uh, you better do what we're telling you to do. But it, you're, it's your decision at the end of the day. So it's not government coercion. There, there was another wonderful spin that someone was giving it. Oh, look at this one. Look at this one. Here's, here's another journalist, Tom Dixon, uh, senior writer, Rolling Stone. You know, it's going to be good people. It's okay. If you fall apart, sometimes tacos fell apart and tacos fall apart and we still love them. Oh, man. And a dog. Okay. If Musk is willing to weaponize internal Twitter privileged and confidential docs for political purposes, imagine what he might do with y'all DMs. <laughs> First of all, you dumb bum, privileged and confidential, they're Musk's documents. These are corporate documents. Whatever privilege could have ever applied to them can be waived by the owner of the documents. That being Twitter. Point number one. Point number two, weaponizing them for political purposes. How about revealing them for truth purposes? It's very interesting how someone finds the truth political. Maybe it is. Third point, imagine what he might do with y'all DMs. Do you know what the last thing that would have been a concern on my mind would have been? Anybody hacking my DMs, at least for like blackmail material. That would have been the last thing on my mind. What I might have in my DMs that I wouldn't want people having, telephone numbers, I don't know. I can't really think of anything more than that. And it wouldn't even be my telephone numbers. It would be telephone numbers of other people that might not want their, you know, that would be what I'd be worried about, someone gaining access to. That this guy from the Rolling Stone is worried. His, his immediate reaction, well, they're going to they're, they're gonna get my DMs and they're going to see some stuff that they shouldn't see. Dude, what's in your DMs? I want to know. Yeah, and, and Musk, Musk is weapon. I've just read a, a, a chat. Musk is weaponizing. He's weaponizing it by releasing it, not weaponizing it by having weaponized the censorship process at Twitter. No, no, it's they accuse you of doing what they are doing. They're accusing their enemies of doing what their enemies are doing so as to create confusion, Conf confusion, confusion. And no, everybody, that is not from uh, Rules for Radicals of Saul Alinsky. Apparently, it was uh, attributed to Joseph Goebbels as a propaganda technique. People, I dare say, oh, here we go. This is David French's take on it. Deleting pornographic pictures of Hunter Biden was appropriate. What if those pornographic pictures were evidence of a crime? Not appropriate anymore. Twitter's suppression of the New York Post story about Hunter laptops, Hunter's laptop was far less defensible. Very, very big of you to admit that. But no amount of misguided rhetoric can transform a Twitter story into a government scandal. I'm sorry, are we not watching the same movie here? It can't turn it into a government scandal when you have intelligence, uh, government officials meeting with big tech on a weekly basis, telling them what to, having back channels to social media companies to tell them what to flag and remove. And because some people don't read the article, 
I did their homework for them. It's a private company exercising free speech is spin. Debatable that Twitter acting at the behest of the DNC. They were acting at the behest of the DNC. FBI, other government bodies via back channels is not a First Amendment violation. Not debatable. It's a scandalous election interference and a priceless disguised campaign donation. This is from David's article. Musk and Carlson are both profoundly wrong. The documents released so far show no such thing. Wrong. We've seen it here in real time. In October 2020, when the laptop story broke, Joe Biden was not president. True. He was trying to become president. He became president as a result of censorship of the story. The Democrat National Committee is not an arm of the government. True. I mean, I guess it's not an arm of the government, but it's definitely a political entity. I, I have to verify. To say that they're not a government entity, I, I, I'm not sure I understand that well enough to be discussed tomorrow. But to say that someone's going to say, oh, it's just the DNC telling Twitter to suppress the story. Nothing to see here. Not political. Nobody's that dumb or dishonest. It's a private political party that, 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 that covers the elections, the primaries of one of the two political parties. Twitter is not an arm of the government. Uh, is it not an arm of the government when the government is sitting with it, meeting with it weekly, telling it what to do, flagging posts for it to take down? Arguable. This means the First Amendment protects Twitter, the Biden campaign team, and the Democrat National Committee. The Twitter files released so far do not describe a violation of the First Amendment. Instead, they detail the exercise of First Amendment rights by independent private actors. Bull crap. Independent when they're being coerced or pressured by, authority, by the FBI. When the FBI comes to me, says Zuckerberg, I take it seriously. Hyper-political issue. So depending on what's on the political issue. spectrum, you either think we didn't censor it enough or censored it way too much. But, right. but we weren't sort of as black and white about it as, as Twitter. We just kind of thought, hey, look, if, if the FBI, which you know, I still view as a legitimate institution in this country, it's a very professional law enforcement. They come to us and tell us that we need to be on guard about something. Then I want to take that seriously. There's no evidence of coercion in the Hunter Biden story. And unless and until there is, the story of Hunter Biden's laptop is a story of private individuals making decisions they were entitled to make. It is not a story of a government run amok. Oh my goodness, David. There's nothing that can be done other than letting these two ideas battle it out in the, in the court of public opinion. I think, even based on the evidence we have, that opinion is... Uh, First of all, misstating the facts and glossing over the potential arguments in law. Just private people. Oh, their, their First Amendment rights are protected. They were just exercising their First Amendment rights by having the government come and sit down with them and tell them sternly, there's a lot of disinformation coming and you better watch out. <laughs>